and welcome to the garden. This is going to be a really short one, but I wanted to show you what I am planting slash winter sowing this week. Um, heading into March, getting excited, weather's starting to warm up, days are a little bit longer. First, I wanted to show you that I am sowing these daffodil seeds. These are daffodil seeds that I've saved last year. I should have ideally um, sown these already, but I forgot about them. So they are going into trays. Hopefully this will be enough uh, time for them to kind of get cold exposure and start to germinate. Um, Got to take care of these. These are going to be our own unique hybrids, of course, which is really exciting. Going to take years before they finally bloom, but I think it will be well worth it. Usually I think four to six years before we see the first flowers from these, but they will be different um, from anything else we have in the garden. So that's super exciting. I should mention this video is also in addition to the last winter sowing video I made where I had a big list of stuff that I was sowing. So this is, uh, you know, moving forward into the season. Even though we're not really ready for tender plants yet, I am going to go ahead and sow my peppers. For the peppers this year, I have the Detil. I have no clue. This was a free packet from Baker Creek. I also have some Nada Pino, which are kind of like jalapenos, but without the spice. Listen, I love spicy, but the the older I get, the less my body's like, you know what, Ta you need to chill with the spicy. So um, I got some of those. I also got some fish peppers, which are my favorite. They're kind of a hot pepper, but I love the kind of variegated type look of those. And I got another free packet, I think. Oh, no, it wasn't. It's the um, Pippin's Golden Honey. I'm going to try those too. Lots of peppers this year. Also winter sowing right now are my tomatoes. I have the Heirloom Tomato Blend. And this tomato called Spoon Tomato uh, that looks like kind of a grape tomato or something that I received from Baker Creek. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the process of winter sowing pepper and tomato plants, I definitely encourage you to check out that video that I have. This process is kind of, uh, I don't know, it takes a little bit of trial and error, but once you get it down, it's fantastic and amazing and works really great. It was a total game changer in terms of the sheer amount of plants that I was able to grow and things like that here in the yard. That's really it for this kind of, this little short update. Uh, here in the coming weeks, I am going to be continuing to clear out different beds and till different beds um, so that I can direct sow a lot of seeds. I'm gonna direct sow a lot of seeds this year simply because um, this transplanting can get labor intensive when it's just me. You know what? Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm sorry, these videos, I don't script these videos. These are just kind of like a, you know, train of thought video. I'm just going to go ahead and attach that tomato video and the pepper video to this video so that you can just keep on watching because I didn't realize this one was going to be short. Um, you can just keep on watching if you want. Forgive me if it's a little bit like outdated and bad. The information is still good there. Um, it's just I recorded that video a long time ago. Even though these videos that I make now are far from professional, I do feel like I am gradually getting a little bit better at it as time goes on. At least I like to think I am. I'm trying my best, I swear. Uh, but stay tuned if you want to see that. If not, I will talk to you all later. Thank you so much for watching. You are so loved and appreciated, and I really do mean that. Thank you so much for making this possible, um, because without you, it wouldn't be. So... I hope you're having a great day. You deserve it. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Hey, everybody. What's up? And welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our kind of series on winter sowing seed starting. So if you haven't seen the first video in this series, make sure you go back to my channel and watch the very first video where I talk about what I'm doing to winter sow these seeds in the low tunnel because we're not using the standard winter sowing procedure this year. We are winter sowing larger trays so we can get more seeds, more seedlings, more plants for the garden in this low tunnel instead of using the milk jugs. Um, as always, if you are looking for a video about how to, you know, winter sow in the milk jugs, you can find that in my channel. Just go to my channel page and type in the search bar. You should be able to find what you're looking for. No problem. I uh, just wanted to clear that up before we get started. So today we are going to be talking about winter sowing tomatoes. Now tomatoes are definitely one of those tricky ones. When I first started growing vegetables and things and I wanted to start my own tomato plants from seed because I wanted to try different varieties of, you know, heirlooms and everything like that. Um, starting from seed was very difficult, especially for somebody who was a complete beginner gardener um, as I was then. And for somebody who was on a budget more specifically, because 
let's just face it, and I know you guys have heard me say it a thousand times, I did not have money for a grow light. So even now to this day, I still don't have money for grow lights. I don't own any grow lights. I strictly start my garden using the winter sowing method, and, and it's just been so helpful to me. So uh, basically all I'm going to do is I am just going to prepare a seed tray as I normally would um, as you've seen me do in these other winter sowing videos for the low title, I'm just going to prepare a seed tray, um, put a piece of paper down on the bottom uh, so my soil can't fall out. You can use a cell tray if you want. It really doesn't matter um, as long as you're going to be able to, you know, maintain that adequate moisture level. I'm just using a potting soil. You can use a seed starting mix if it's better if you have access to that. I'm just going to fill this seed tray up with a potting soil. And I am going to take my tomato seeds. I have a couple different varieties of tomato seeds. This year I am growing Bonnie Best. I am growing Moneymaker. I'm trying to remember Black Vernissage or Vernissage or whatever, however you say it. I don't really care. Um, and I have a couple of seeds that I saved last year from an heirloom tomato mix that had just a wide variety of rainbow of colors of heirloom tomato seeds that I'm really excited to see what the germination rate is on. Uh, what the germination rate is like on those because you know, I did save those seeds myself Anyway, once I've done that I've got several trays of this so uh, I am just going to sow these seeds on top of the soil here these tomato seeds on top of the soil And I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to press those firmly into the soil, you know, get a good contact with the soil uh, after I have done that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more soil and I'm going to go back and I'm going to lightly sprinkle that soil over the seeds, uh, just covering those up just barely, just the very fine dusting of soil to cover those up and I'm going to firm it down and make sure that that comes in good contact with the soil. Uh, now if you've watched any of these winter sowing videos before, you know I usually surface sow my seeds, but for tomato seeds it seems like they just do a little bit better if I do cover them up just a little bit and uh, press them down really well. Covered the seeds with the soil. I'm just going to take this tray outside and I'm going to take the mist nozzle on my garden hose for that I use specifically for small seedlings. And I am going to water this tray really, really well. Make sure that this tray is good and saturated. Really making sure to get that nice, consistent, even moisture all the way distributed throughout this tray. I can't, I cannot emphasize enough how important good moisture is when you're doing this. Um, after I have done that, I'm just going to place this tray into the low tunnel. Now, I should go ahead and say that I am in zone 6B7. This is around mid-March that I am doing this. Um, for perspective, my last frost date is usually around the first week of May. Um, so, I'm technically starting a little bit later than I might start my tomato plants indoors. But the reason for this around March, by the time mid-March comes around, is that I'm starting to see warmer temperatures. Here in my garden, there are days that, you know, get up into the 50s then that are sunny. Uh, it's really important that the temperatures have started to make that kind of shift that you see in springtime. Obviously, since it's in March, the days, the hours of daylight have started getting longer. These are all just really important aspects to getting things like tomato seeds to germinate with that really nice warm fluctuation in temperatures in the low tunnel. Now, once these seeds do germinate, we will need to watch them. These tender seedlings, that's something we're going to have to do. We're going to have to pay attention to it. So, in general, once these seedlings have germinated, any time that the temperature is above about, you know, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I generally tend to leave them in the low tunnel, uh, leave them alone, let them grow on, stuff like that. Anytime that the temperature is going to dip below about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or that there is a definite chance of frost forecasted, we are going to have to add a little bit of extra protection to these seedlings because we want to make sure that they are safe out here in the cold. Even though it's still cold in the winter sowing method, we do want to do our best to prevent any kind of losses because let's face it, losses can happen when we are winter sowing you know, things like tomatoes and peppers and all that stuff. So we have to take that into consideration, kind of keep a close eye on those. To protect these from frost, all I'm going to do is I am going to cover the trays with a row cover or even an old sheet. I've used an old sheet in the past. 
in addition to the low tunnel. So just like, you know, when you have the winter sowing milk jugs out in the yard and there's a chance of frost, you cover them with an old sheet or a frost blanket, but they're still in their bottles. I'm doing the same thing here with, you know, my trays. I'm covering them with a row cover or, you know, a frost blanket. And then I'm covering the tunnel back up and getting that kind of double layer of protection. Now, I do realize this whole process can be very much a process of trial and error. You know, the first time it's a little nerve wracking. Like, is this going to work? I can't believe this doesn't sound like it's going to work. Trust me, I've been there. I've been the skeptic or I was just like, there's no way this is going to work. But I, it does. At least it works for me. It works in my garden. If you are totally freaked out by the idea of, you know, the plants being outside when it turns cold and or it's going to turn really cold and um, you might be, like, say it's going to dip down into the 20s and that I wouldn't feel comfortable leaving it out if it got into the 20s. So the option to bring the plant trays in for the night is always there. Um, I've done that a couple times too, you know, uh, I think it dipped down to 26 once and I was just like, oh, that is too cold. I don't want to risk losing my transplants. I'm bringing that tray in until the weather warms back up. Like I said, the whole thing is really just a process of trial and error, but once you get the hang of it, you can start so many tomato plants and it is such a great thing to know how to do. Um, I've heard a lot of people argue that, you know, oh, well, the transplants that I start indoors are better. Uh, they're bigger. They're whatever. Um, I've honestly not had that experience. As somebody who's done both multiple times, um, yes, when I transplant out in the springtime after frost has passed, the tomato plants that I have generally smaller. I'll admit to that. But, in my opinion, my, just my experience, the plants that I've started using the winter sowing method are so much healthier than the ones I could start inside. It's not even funny. In a lot of cases, you know, a lot of cases, the ones that you started inside are taller, but that's because they've been stretching and desperate for light. Um, the transplants that I'm getting from the winter sowing method are short, they are stocky, they're covered in little, um, those really those nice fibers that you see in really healthy transplants they're darker green they don't need to be hardened off at all you can just plant them into the garden when frost has passed i'm telling you i can't say enough good things about it that's really about it for this video be sure to let me know your experiences down in the comments below i realize winter sowing isn't for everybody but a lot of people really like it if you have any questions, be sure to leave those down there too. I try to get to all the questions. I try to answer comments at least once a week. Sometimes I get caught up, so um, it might take me a while to get to your comment, but I usually do try to answer those. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like this video, be sure to subscribe. We would love to have you. We're making new content on the regular, uh, usually all about gardening, growing flowers, stuff like that. Maybe some random DIY projects every now and then, so if you like a surprise, you might like this channel too. Hope that you guys are having such an amazing day. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.